So this video, I'm going to do a quick close-up on some of the details of this Bear Creek Arsenal rifle. It's a mid-length gun, and it's a $370 rifle on their website. So uh, the reason I wanted to do this is on the last video I talked about, I, I kind of showed the rifle, but I want to show just a couple, really touch on a couple different aspects of this rifle. Uh, bottom line is I'm impressed. Uh, $370, that is damn cheap for an AR-15. There are SKSs out there that are more expensive in this day and age. I've seen Mosin and the Gants in my area that are selling for more than $370, believe it or not. Uh, $370, I, in my area also here, sporting goods stores, I've seen Remington pump action shotguns that cost more. So that says something. I never thought this day would come where AR-15s would be so inexpensive, and I don't think that this will last. Uh, I think we're kind of in a great spot right now to get these rifles. I like AR-15s, and I actually have a lot of AR-15s. I'm actually doing reviews on other AR-15 parts here shortly from different companies other than Bear Creek. But what I like about Bear Creek is they're the first company that I've messed with with their budget rifles that the parts are actually quality stuff. It's in spec. Uh, before I do, before I uh, took on my current profession, I worked at an AR-15 store. And we dealt with a lot of different brands and we helped people. We would assemble some AR-15s for people and do some work on it, some minor armory type work on the guns. And whenever I messed with a cheap AR-15, I would see a lot of issues with it. I could look at it and go, okay, this is why it's so cheap. They really messed up on this. They messed up on this. Well, this right here is a good looking gun. Now, as with all my other reviews, I review the gun that's in front of me. I can't speak to every single gun that Bear Creek makes, and I never will do that with any company. Just like the review I did not too uh, long ago on Sky Firearms, the model CPX2. The one that I have works just great. Uh, I know there are others out there that have not had the same experience as me. But what I will say is this rifle right here works awesome. Uh, so I want to just show a couple things on it on why why I think it's awesome. The gun runs great, and you can kind of see the quality that was put in, even for two, 370 bucks. So um, we'll start off towards the muzzle end. Now keep in mind, I put some extras on this thing. Ghost Valkyrie muzzle brake, the light, obviously the sights, they don't come from the factory. Uh, but this is a 16-inch mid, uh, mid-length profile barrel, and there's the gas block right there. And I just kind of want to pan and show the gas block and show how it's attached on there. Because I know it's important for some of you folks out there to see these things up close. The M-Lock rail itself, I don't know the specific brand. I'm assuming that Bear Creek sourced these out to keep costs down. Um, I don't know if they're machining these themselves. So, uh, But the thing is, is uh, regardless whether they're machining it themselves or they're going out and buying these, which I think they are. That seems to be the smart thing to do to keep costs down. It's just a source from somewhere else. It's well made. It fits the gun well. It's solid. It's straight. It holds all the goodies. So that's about all I can speak on the unlock rail. Very comfortable. The upper receiver. Uh, for those of you that are interested, there are some Air 15 junkies out there. They pay attention to forge marks. Most of us, we... Don't worry about the forging marks, but this is a square forging mark. I've seen these forging marks on like DPMS rifles and Colt rifles. Um, and I'm sure there's others out there. That's just two that come to mind. But don't worry about it. There's a few forgers that make these AR-15s in the U that make these receivers in the U.S. And each has like a different uh, type of mark. Like for example, some forgings out there will have the keyhole versus the square. And there's some other markings. I'm not going to get too much into it. But if that's your thing, if you're that in the AR-15s, just for a little data point, it has the square on it. Lower receiver, well made. Uh, the lower receiver is where I see some budget AR-15s fail because they fail to do it in spec. They miss some machining. You know, the quality control is just out of spec. Um, just not a good lower receiver. This thing, I mean, there's nothing special about it, but it's all in spec. Everything's good to go. The pins stay where they need to stay. 
Uh, that's one thing that I, I, one talking point, I've noticed on some budget made AR-15, sometimes the pins, if it's not correct spec, they'll start to walk out on you. These don't. Um, so that's kind of a good thing there. Magwell's good to go. No issues with the Magwell. Everything is spec'd out perfectly. Buffer tube, not a commercial buffer tube. It's a mil spec uh, size buffer tube. That's kind of cool. Um, not that it matters too much, but uh, there's commercial buffer tubes and there's mil spec buffer tubes. And usually when I see a really inexpensive budget build, I usually see the commercial buffer tubes on there versus the mil spec. Uh, maybe that's changed a little bit more, but that's been my experience. So it's kind of nice seeing a mil spec buffer tube on this. Uh, castle nut. Castle nut, standard castle nut. One thing that people ask for uh, is whether if the castle nut was staked or not. No, it wasn't staked. I staked it myself, quick little stake, and I put some uh, blue Loctite, or that thread locker rather in there. I do that myself, you don't have to. Uh, if the castle nut is specced uh, or torqued properly, which it was on this particular one, you shouldn't have too much issues with it backing out. If you're using the rifle heavily, you may have an issue there. You can always stake it yourself. It's a real easy process. Or you can run some blue thread locker right in here. Loosen up the castle nut, put some blue thread locker in, tighten it up. Then you'll be good to go. So not an issue. Keep in mind, this is a $370 gun. This is not a $2,000 AR-15. If it was a $2,000 AR-15, I'd have totally different expectations. Um, let me bust it open here. And I'll show you the uh, thing that everybody loves to talk about in regards to AR-15s. And that is bolt carrier group. So here it is. M16 profile, right? It has these machine marks right here. It's not a perfect circle. It has these machine marks, and I'm assuming just to cut down on cost. Uh, everything seems to be in spec with this. The bolt, it has the um, NPR marking. MPI marking on it rather and it's 9130 is the composition of the bolt there's 9130 and there's carpenter 158 are the two that come to mind and there's been a little bit of talk that I've seen doing my research between 9130 and 158 I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter um, 158 may have a little bit more hardness but on the same side the the, the, the same argument people have argued that 9130 if uh, treated right is a little bit stronger than 158. Uh, 9130 seems to be a little bit cheaper. That's probably why we're seeing it here. But I'm not worried. Everything's perfectly fine. Uh, you're not going to come across an issue. One thing I do suggest though with AR-15s, whether they're inexpensive guns like this or expensive guns, you want to get spares anyway. Get a spare bolt, spare extractor set up, spare springs. Uh, I always recommend that for AR-15s because it's so cheap and easy to do. And it just, it's just something good to have in case you run across an issue. Uh, you can deal with it. The extractor, this does have the O-ring extractor upgrade in this, so it provides a little bit stronger extraction. Now, I know there may be some hardcore AR-15 guys and gals out there that say, well, properly tuned AR-15 doesn't need that fancier extractor. Right. Totally agree with that. Uh, I don't think this one will probably need it either, but it's a nice thing to have. So it's just one of those, I actually do that modification on all my AR-15s, even my expensive guns. I make sure I have that extractor O-ring in there. It gives a little bit more of a stronger extraction. Gas key, uh, no looseness. Bolts are staked. Uh, it's not the deepest staking that I've seen, but they're staked well. Not having any issues with the bolt or the uh, gas key coming loose on the bolt. Uh, on the bolt here, you can see some machine marks right here, and then if I flip it over, right there, I don't know if the camera's picking it up too well. Some people view that as an issue, it is not. This is a non-critical area. Keep in mind, again, $370 gun. I want things to be done right to where they matter. Uh, a little bit of machine marks, it doesn't matter to me. Now, if I was spending $2,000 for this gun, my expectations would be different, obviously. But everything works insanely well on this firearm. I've shot different spec ammo through it, uh, from the 5.56 down to the, or the, uh, the M855, 5.56, the 193. Uh, I've shot the cheap tool ammo through it. 
no issues so far and I don't expect there to be any issues um, again I'm not seeing any issues that I've seen with other budget level guns as far as feeding issues uh, the trigger and hammer pin walking out uh, that doesn't happen on this model um, I get I went ahead and staked the castle nut so I can't speak to that I went ahead and took care of that myself so that's just something I do uh, but none of the other bolts the fasteners here none of the other stuff has come loose uh, and that speaks a lot I mean heck just as a story my Colt M4 that I had when I was in the service uh, I was the first I guess so-called owner of that Colt M4 they got them into the armory. We were, we were switching out at the time. We were switching out from all the M16A2s to the, to the brand new M4s. And it was Colts. And we just got them in and we were issuing out. I remember it was an FTX. And we were issuing them out for the first time. This is kind of a uh, strike against the armor. They should have caught this. But I remember getting my Colt M4 and the damn pistol grip was loose on it. Wiggling back and forth. I'm going, what the heck? I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, what the heck? Well, the armor kind of said, well, just deal with it. And I'm like, screw that. I went over to our tool room that we had, and I just, it had a flathead screw in there. Instead, I'm typically, I'm used to the hex head screws, but it had a flathead screw in there. So I took a flathead screwdriver and torqued her down, and she was good after that. But that was a Colt product. Something like that, to me, is a huge oversight. Leaving the factory with a loose pistol grip. And that's on Colt's. So, you know, point taken, expensive doesn't always mean excellent QC and excellent quality. In this case, this is very inexpensive, but the quality is there. I'm really impressed. Um, in later videos, I may compare this to different brands. Like I said, I do a lot of AR-15 reviews, and I'm kicking that back up. So you're going to see different brands that I'm going to review. But I think Bear Creek Armory, this will hold up well. Uh, I really like the rifle. I'm really pleased with it. And, you know, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but I'm just going to call it as it is. When something's working good, I'm going to say it. It's working good. Uh, I'm very impressed. So, take advantage of this time frame. If you're not going to go to Bear Creek, go somewhere. Look at the AR-15s. If you don't have one or if you want another one for inexpensive, do it. It doesn't hurt to have a spare rifle hanging around anyway for whatever type of miscellaneous use. And... Now is the time for us to enjoy our freedoms and take advantage of it. So, all right, thanks a lot for watching as always, and leave your comments below and stay safe.